all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. I just hope they also remember what they're really good at and how they need to bring that again next year. There's so many good things to take from this season and so much momentum that I don't see why we wouldn't uh, perform at a high level going into next year. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Let's go ahead and tip off this 2024 BYU basketball postseason show. I'm calling it that. It's not officially that, but that's what we're calling it today on the show. I like it. What went so well for BYU as we review and then spend a little time previewing next season? And what can BYU replicate? Let's start with what went so well for BYU this season, Jerem. There was a lot. You talk about 23 and 11, 10 and 8 in league, tied for fifth. Tied for fifth? Are you kidding me? After being picked 13th. Sixth seed in the NCAA tournament. Overall seed was 17, obviously. Bracketing principles of, of Sunday play and Big 12 in the second round matchup. Da, da, da. You get pushed to a six from a five. Net was 12 when the dust settled. 12? Are you kidding me? KPI 30, strength record 21, BPI 17. Ken Palm uh, ends up at uh, 18. Okay, quad one, six quad one wins, Spence. Six and eight. Five and three in quad two. So 11 and 11 in quad one and two, which is really good. Four wins over ranked teams for the first time in BYU basketball history in the regular season. The most they had, had was two against two different ranked teams. And then no bad losses, 12 and 0 in quad three and four. That was awesome. You look at the efficiency in points per possession, 14th in offensive efficiency, 18th in points per possession. Amazing. Top 20 offense. Defense, 60th in efficiency, which to me is pretty good. That's upper sixth. It, exactly. It's top 15% top in the 15%, country. I like it. Um, and then points per possession allowed, even better, 40th. So those, those are really good metrics. This was a tremendous season by BYU. Obviously, we would have liked a first-round win against Duquesne. We've said it ad nauseum. So the answer is, what's, what's repeatable from what I just listed there? I think that offensive efficiency is, Spence. I think BYU can be a top 25 team again. I think they have a lot of weapons. I think that uh, the offense is diverse in that you can throw it into Foose. Ali Khalifa can create a unique five-out system where he passes back door to Noah Waterman and others, uh, you creating open threes, uh, which brings me to my second point. I think that BYU can be a top three, get threes up team again. Yes. 32 a game. I think that they can get to 30-plus again next Why year. Why would that change? The formula works. Yeah. It works, and it's what BYU is built to do. It's how they got to the NCAA tournament. It's how they beat Kansas. It's how they had success. The other thing, I think bench points can stay the same as well. BYU was uh, top five in bench points in the country at 33 a game. I think going to have a deep bench again. It might even be deeper because <laughs> you're, you're going to add a little bit. You add Colin Chandler and Dawson Baker and then uh, Isaac Davis, and who, who knows if you add any more else from the portal. I'd, I'd imagine there's one or two more players that will come in. I think in those three areas, you can replicate that. And then um, well, I want to hear what you want to get better, but I think there are areas, obviously, BYU can improve. Yeah, on the surface, expecting BYU to be 16 in Ken Palm and 12 in net when the season's over. And at one point, yeah. they... We're a top five Ken Palm team and number one in the net. Like, it's going to be tough to yeah. get to those specific numbers at any point next season. And, but that's not – it's more about just being in the vicinity of the final season numbers for BYU. And I think they can do that. And here's why. What's BYU losing? I, I know that they're probably going to lose Jackson Robinson. But to your point yesterday, Jackson Robinson wasn't scoring 22 points a game. Yeah. He was scoring – 14 Good and number, change. but not a crazy number. Okay, and he yeah. was coming off the bench for crying out loud. He was playing starter minutes, but BYU can replace that void of points scored and those other statistical numbers from Jackson Robinson and Spencer Johnson. They can do so yeah. with the emergence of Dawson Baker. Yes. And a healthy Ali Khalifa. A healthy Ali Khalifa should help out. Colin Chandler back from his mission. What does Isaac Davis do on this team? Is he even asked to do anything in year one? There will be enough from BYU's core and the additions to help replace the void that Jackson Robinson would leave if he decides to go pro, and I think he will. But why, why would I expect BYU to all of a sudden take this big dip? Every, basically, everybody is back. And if that core is back, you would think that they will at least maintain. I mean, 
Why, why would they get worse? I want to hear the logic of from somebody that's like, well, maybe Jackson Robinson was a glue guy and, and he made certain things happen that others can't. I, okay, oh, fine. But is it going to make that big of a difference? I, I don't think it will because there are so many players back. If you want specific numbers, BYU can change their mentality of being more aggressive going to the basket. Like, they will have the capability to earn some more free throw line trips, and Dawson Baker should help with something and like Colin that. And Colin Chandler. That you, was a number where BYU really, yes. Now. That was where BYU really struggled. So now yep. it's not just Dallin Hall. Yep. It's Dawson Baker and Dallin Hall, and maybe Colin Chandler as yep. well. So the, the Cougars should have an uptick there. The numbers, uh, again, in Ken Palm and Annette, it might be a little bit lower, but I don't expect it to be that much lower. I think they'll be a top 25 team in both of those most important sorting tool metrics for the tournament selection committee. Other things I want BYU to get better of. I, I want BYU to be a top 40 defensive efficiency team. Okay. They were coming out of non-con. Obviously, playing in the Big 12 is tougher. They fell to 60. I, I'm not adding, uh, calling for like a top 25 defense per se, because if you're top 25 in offense and defense, you should probably be <laughs> like a top four seed, right? I'm not calling for that per se. Three-point percentage, I'd like to go up a little bit. 34.8 was pretty good, but I'd like to see that in 35 and a half and 36 Yeah, that is pretty good. Like, thir- like if you average it up. As a team, up. pretty good. You have a lot of good shooters, right? And then more, I want more free throws. BYU was bottom 20 in the yeah. country in percentage of points from the line. It was 15% about. I'd like that to be a tick higher. BYU successfully beat Iowa State and Texas because they got to the line more. I would like to see BYU um, be a little more aggressive on the drive. You're going to draw more fouls that way. The hard part for BYU to try and get better defensively this go-around is that Cahill Fennell, your defensive coordinator, is now the head coach yeah, somewhere you gotta else. you got to bring in somebody else or reassign somebody else. So how will that impact BYU's ability to get better as a defensive team? Again, the natural inclination of fans and of us in the media is to think, okay, if you bring back the majority of what was a really good team last year, you should get a little bit better. Like, there's natural progression. It doesn't always work that way, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not guaranteed, but the hope is that that happens. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. we hope that the that it trend... Shorted, it shorted last year. We hope that trend reigns supreme for yeah. BYU. Because right now, I'm telling you, like, I, why would I expect BYU to all of a sudden just become an... A team that is much worse than they were this year. When you have basically all of the key parts back, are you are you supplying more skill and experience than you had with Jackson Robinson and Spencer Johnson with the newcomers? The experience, no, absolutely not. But you talk about the talent of Colin Chandler. Like Colin Chandler coming out of high school has NBA level talent based on where he is ranked, as high as 28 at one point, 32 as we sit right now. That is exciting. Um, we need to let this kid develop before we use those three letters, per se. But you, you can't be ranked that high and us not be excited about you. And then Isaac Davis is like uh, Yoli Child's light in terms of what his skill set is coming out of high school. Yeah. Give him time to develop as well. What can Dawson Baker become? True kind of X factor for BYU, Y factor, if you will. It's, it's super exciting. And then can you continue to build? Ali Khalifa, is that the worst physically we're going to see him? Because he was banged up. He didn't have a good knee. What does a healthy Ali Khalifa look like? Is he the guy that's yamming against UCF a little more? <laughs> like, that guy was awesome. And his ability to make threes, he made 29 threes. Uh, didn't, didn't shoot it particularly well. Didn't go to the basket a ton um, in the post last year. Are we going to see more of that from him? Or is it more of the I'm a facilitator on uh, the outside? Does BYU bring in a shot blocker? that affects sort of the rotation in some yeah. capacity. A rim we'll, protector. We'll see. How do you, is there a metric that shows you a team can get better when they are not making threes? Like, can BYU generate other ways to create points when three-pointers are not falling? They did it on occasion, but clearly that was, as Sean Farnham pointed out, multiple occasions, BYU, when, they, when the threes are not dropping, they need to find other ways quicker in those games to engage in the combat zone and find other ways to score. Get at the rim. Get to the line. So the mid-range is not going to happen in this offense. It's just an inefficient shot. Yeah. Look, look at the NBA. Look at the way – I know the Jazz are struggling this year, but the way they play is the model. That's how they got a one seed three years ago is layups or threes. I read a book by John Calipari a couple years ago. He's like, why would you shoot a mid-range ever? 
shoot a bunch of threes. It's layups of threes. Layups of free throws as well. Yeah. If you want to track metrics and see that BYU is able to do that, maybe you look at their the percentage of two-point shots they take around the rim and how many free throws you shoot. I, w- I would like to see maybe some upticks in both of those categories because the reliance on the three-point shot will burn you at times. It did for BYU this year. It will. But, but it, it will get you on fire, too. But it you... was mostly good. Like It, it was, was like good. 80% good for the season. 23-3, and three, final tally, 32% and up. That's wild. That's pretty that, good. This is who BYU is. They're built to do this, and I think it's going to continue. Topic two, Gary Bohannon listed as the 15th best quarterback in the Big 12 from College what? Football Report on Twitter. What do you make of this? Because that would be second lowest. Well, first of all, there are a lot of really good quarterbacks in the Big 12. Indeed there are. Okay, Shador Sanders, the caller, Noah Fafita, Arizona. Jalen Daniels is back again at Kansas, and he's healthy. Cam Rising's not one! Cam Rising's number four. Garrett Green's a good player. BYU knows it. K.J. Jefferson, for crying out loud, the Arkansas transfer is number 11. Dude, I forgot he's in the Big 12. Alan Bowman. playing him again. Oh, Oklahoma boy. State's quarterback in his ninth year, or whatever it is. He's number 10. <laughs> okay? So, at first we can't when I make saw, fun of that because Garrett's a seventh-year guy. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so is 15, Cam Rising. 15. I was like, 15 for Gary Bohannon. Whoa, that's yeah. yikes. But I looked at the list. There are so many good, polished, experienced good quarterbacks players. in the Big 12. I think if Gary Bohannon is healthy, he's better than the 15th best quarterback on this list. Where then? Probably around somewhere around Daquan Finn and K.J. Jefferson. Probably up around the 11 or 12. How is K.J. Jefferson that low, by the way? That's crazy, right? I would put K- I'd put him above Alan Bowman and Josh and- Hoover. <sighs> Like, a, like, Avery Johnson at seven is really interesting because he showed some really big flashes. Like, being the guy the whole time, what is that going to look like for him at Kansas State? Because, um, yeah, he looks like sunshine from Remember the Titans. It's really fun. Um, he can run the rock. Yes, the, the hope is that Gary Bohannon can, like, crack the top ten and BYU can be, like, an eight-win team. And who's to say it's not Jake Retzloff, by the way? Like, just automatically Gary Bohannon? We, I, to me, I'd have a slash there. On Gary slash Jake. Just put BYU quarterback. BYU number 15. QB, TBD. Like, whoever it is. Because <laughs> we don't know it's Gary. We don't know uh, that it's Jake at the moment. But, yeah, th- this this uh, conference has some really good quarterbacks. It's going to be fun to watch these guys sling it. And BYU faces some of these top guys. Like, like facing, like you yes. mentioned, facing Fafita and Daniels and rising. The top four. Oh, my gosh. Man, like, well, that, three of the top four. BYU will Shador see. Sanders this year. But, like. Oh, my gosh. Um, we were really hoping Colorado would be on the schedule, but it wasn't. Not the case. 15, like if, if Gary Bohannon or Jake Retzoff is truly 15, it's like, oh, we're talking about barely making a bowl game or not again. Yeah, probably. I would, I would think. That, if that's, that's how cap. it shakes out, but the hope is that that's not the case. BYU has been picked to finish second to last in a few things. Basketball, we just referenced. They were picked mm-hmm. to finish second to last mm-hmm. and uh, finished fifth. <laughs> If Gary Bohannon can crack the top 10 Big 12 quarterbacks, as you were pointing or, out. Or Jake. Or Jake, then BYU is probably going to win seven or eight games. I would like that. I would, I'll take seven right now. BYU's building. BYU's not in a challenge for the Big 12 uh, kind of year this year walking in. I hope he's motivated. And frankly, I hope you all go listen would, to this should help. the Deep Blue podcast that Gary Bohannon did with Jason Shepard. It's really good. He talks yeah, about part one miniature goals and just like, can I throw the ball again? Can I complete a 10-yard pass? Like, it, it was his he arm didn't think play again. had to be restructured yeah. and surgically repaired in the, a lot of ways. Shoulder, right? Yeah, the yeah. shoulder. So yeah. it's like he had very miniature goals, and so he's just built on all of those things until you put a bunch of those together. They become medium-sized goals, and then when you accomplish medium-sized goals, then you can start dreaming a little bit bigger for sure. But it's, it was a fascinating conversation, so I encourage everyone to listen to it. Really good if you want some insight yeah. into what Gary Bohannon has been dealing with. If his shoulder's actually good, and because we know he can run, Jerem, we know he's super athletic and that he can extend plays, and he's, and in large part, he's at his best when things are out of system and the play is breaking down. He just can extend plays. But if he can make some throws off kilter, off system, and, and extend some plays for BYU, that's where the Cougars could really do some damage with a, an experienced wide receiver core. I wonder where BYU is going to be picked in the Big 12 this year. Out of 16 teams. I think 14. Somewhere in the 12 to 16 range. I don't think BYU will be last. 
I don't think they'll be second to last, but they could very well be, as you said, 14, 13, 12, somewhere in that range. Arizona State, Cincinnati, Houston, BYU are all kind of in that conversation. Yeah, the bottom four or five right there, based on what they did last year and what they have coming back. Yeah, Baylor is also in that conversation. Yeah. Uh, massive restructuring of their coaching staff aside from Dave right. Aranda. Right. And they struggled last year. Yeah. No, they, like, there's some... BYU is going five. to be somewhere in the bottom five. Being a power five. And whatever you thought you got to know in the Big 12, reset. Because it's a new league with four new teams, two are out. <laughs> like, it is a reshuffling of the deck, which is kind of fun, actually. Yeah, fascinating stuff for sure. Uh, some basketball discuss, some football discuss. By the way, Caleb Lohner in the transfer portal today. Crazy. Do BYU good, fans, good old Caleb. Uh, are they going to reach out to Caleb? Where is he going to go? I think, honestly, he should, he should probably pick a Mountain West school and try and go be a star his final year. Right. I want him to succeed. I like him. I would love to see yeah. him play well wherever he ends up for yeah. sure. Yeah. 